and thank you for hanging around for this. Uh, we're going to get our, our panel together. Before then, does anybody want to react to the film? What do you think of it? Volunteers? Sad. Yes. Uh, here we go. It was sad. It was kind of heartbreaking, wasn't it? Insightful. Insightful? Yeah, absolutely. Tell me about yourself. I'm the dean of students in the Philadelphia School District. And, you know, what I found, you know, really interesting is that sometimes you can say, you kind of tap them on their head and send them away. Mm -hmm. And watching this, you know, it makes you realize that, you know, it really may have been a big issue for that particular child. It may have been the thing that broke the movie eyes. So it kind of changed my thinking in the sense. And also, as a parent of a child who I go in for that was being bullied, you know, it's that communication. So I think we was talking, she worked at the same school as teacher. Um, it made me realize communication was key. And more importantly than the children, I think that needs to be this. I think the educators, the adults, the parents, yeah, I mean, the children. I don't know, do you think bullying will go see it? No. I have the downside. I think it really comes down to us as adults communicating with our children, understanding what their day is like. I have a middle schooler. I'm watching this, I'm going, wow. Because apparently they aren't telling us what happens on that bus or in the hall. Well, and if they do tell, you know, if they do tell someone, there's going to be retribution. And I think they know that. And they're scared because things can get worse. And I'm just feeling bad this day because a student came to me at the beginning of the day and told me something and told me something at the end of the day, same thing. And I didn't act on it. You know, it was one of the things. You don't feel guilty? I feel like guilty because we'll be getting things maybe 20, 30 times, you know, maybe a week. And every single issue, it's overwhelming. You know, you can't react to it. But now I'm like, I can't wait to get back to school tomorrow. <laughs> Take care of it. Take care of it. Yeah. One thing that bothered me was that, you know, the dad had a tendency to do so, because bullying has been around for a long time. Uh, why don't you stand up for yourself? Exactly. You know, get in there and take care of it yourself. He, he can not take care of himself. Right. Seeing, it from that perspective, he, seeing it from his perspective, he couldn't take care of himself. And that just compounded. You know, so he was getting it from every end, from the school, from the kids, from his family. You know, what, what could he do? Yeah, another irritating thing for me was the, the uh, young woman, Jemay, was over her name was Jemay. And she's the one who needs the doctor? Yeah. That was always the one who needs the doctor. Okay, I think our family was together. Hi, everybody. I'm going to introduce myself. So, you want to take over? Sure. Okay, cool. You know what you're doing. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know how to talk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Nick Webster from Two Little Two. Um, again, thank you all for staying and, and for spending this. And we'll kind of go down the line here. Everybody, just say your name, introduce yourself, and, you know, we'll give our thoughts. And, of course, we want to have questions and comments from you. Um, I like that this audience was very vocal. A lot of people were speaking up during the film. So obviously you know that it had such an effect on us. And we took an issue to come here first, which means we want to kind of expand ourselves in a way to learn and educate ourselves more. So hopefully we'll be able to pay for it. So I'm going to just pack the microphone down and just kind of say a few words. Don, do you have one? Hi, uh, my name is Robert Reed. I'm with the U.S. Attorney's Office here in Philadelphia. I'm the Executive Assistant for the United States Attorney. Um, I guess my reaction is it was an incredibly powerful film, uh, and it was very moving, obviously. Uh, it's, it's hard to watch young people be mistreated by the, by, in the way they were. It was a little bit like reading Lord of the Flies or watching Lord of the Flies, the way the children were treating the children. I mean, while I have many reactions to the film, um, one of the things is I think we saw a dysfunction in so many different areas. Kids treating kids, parents treating kids, school teachers treating kids, the law enforcement treating kids, uh, and that's just what we saw. Uh, I thought it was very disturbing. I make one other comment. Uh, this was a depiction of rural America. Um, I studied and I'm really a student of the violence in this region. We have a lot of violence in Philadelphia. Uh, we have a lot of violence in Chester, and Camden, and Reading, and Allentown. Uh, and I would love to see a major producer come into Philadelphia and talk about the violence in the inner city and spend the time that we see, that we just saw, although I thought it was very well done, 
about the violence in the inner city. It's, it's similar in lots of respects with respect to the bullying, but the violence is a very complex issue and it needs to be addressed. Robert, I think maybe what the director and the producer was trying to do is to show that, oh, it's supposed to be safe out here in, in Oklahoma and in the Midwest and all that, and it's not a big, bad city. Maybe that was their point. Well, let me just say one thing. My wife is here and she's from Oklahoma. Okay. And, um, and she's from a town called Bartlesville. And in that very town, there's a documentary that came out that there was a pediatrician when she was a child that had molested about 100 people. Yeah. And the city was, was silent in Oklahoma. But that's not typical just of Oklahoma. That's all over the country. The problem is everyone has to stand up. If you see violence, and I don't mean just physical violence, abuse of violence, and that could be rumors, cyberbullying, anything like that, you have to stand up and you have to take a stand. And I think that was the message of this. Yeah, at the end of the film, it's going to take an army to crush this problem. That's what I like about the film, that sometimes movies, mass media sometimes helps in that regard, gets the masses involved. Um, hi everyone, my name is Kelly Crayley and I'm from the Attitude Center, which is Philadelphia's um, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning youth center. And myself and D'Angelo are here tonight um, seeing the movie for the second time so that we can emotionally step back a little bit and sort of strategically do it. Um, I know if you've seen it the first time, it's, uh, I raged for about a week and maybe you still continue to. Um, and I think now seeing it this time um, and being able to perhaps articulate my feelings on it a little bit more, um, in having a conversation with a friend over the past week about the film, but we were talking and I was saying, if someone says something homophobic to me as I walk down the street, it's harassment, right? If a coworker were to hit me uh, while we were driving to work together, if a coworker were to got to hit me in a squirrely, uh, that would be violence. And so when we use the word bully, I think sometimes traditionally it can have associations with kids, right, or a cartoon. But it's actually violence and it's discrimination and it's harassment. And I think this movie does a very nice job of giving the kids, the kids the ability to say that, right? The ability to say that before the moment of crisis happens and makes it real. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to D'Angelo and let him take my mic. But, yeah. yeah, thank you for that, Kelly. Um, I actually feel the same. Uh, when I first saw the movie, I was like, wow, they had so many opportunities to maybe even talk to the bullies or, you know, why was this the way it was? You know, I was really. It, I really had strong feelings about it. And not only that, it was that I could also see myself in some of the young people who were in the movie. Um, I was bullied from first grade all the way through high school. Um, I was the only, in my high school, um, I was the only gay kid, or at least out gay kid, in a very Christian high school. And so when I was bullied, um, the administration or the teachers, whoever I brought it up to, would just say, oh, well, they're just trying to show you why being gay is not what God wants for you to be, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was like, wow, oh my gosh, they're endorsing, they're endorsing this violence, they're endorsing um, the bullying, the harassment, and so it sort of made me feel like I had no place to turn. I couldn't tell my parents, I wasn't out to them yet, I didn't know how they would receive me, and so it was just, it was hard around my peers not being able to just be who I was and being harassed for it and not having any of the teachers really do anything about that. And so I was in a very dark place. I contemplated suicide. Um, I wanted to run away. And um, it was like, it was really bad. It wasn't until I actually found the addict that I was actually able to have a support system, meet people who were like myself, and, you know, find a staff who was supporting me. It made me feel like I was actually a valued member of a community. Um, and so watching the film a second time in a way that was very much, you know, allowing me to set that, you know, I see that the way this movie was filmed was for it to have an effect on us. You know, we totally see, I mean, we, we don't have to see this movie to know the effects of bullying. I mean, we can just see it just walking around the city of Philadelphia. I mean, the violence is all around us. Like, we really don't need this movie to see it, but some people do. And I really like the fact that it's been brought to the media attention. So my question is, you know, will this be something that continues? Will this be something that we will be proactive against? Um, the movie said, you know, that everything starts with one and it takes an army 
to get rid of this issue. And, you know, we really need to stand together like an army if we're ever going to combat this, we're really going to stop this. You know, it's a huge, huge problem. And kids have been killing themselves for years. I mean, it, it's something that needs to be stopped now. Again, I'm Mike from Fox 49. The reason I'm here, we're, we're videotaping this, by the way, uh, is to listen mostly uh, to the comments. We're going to do a half hour special on this. We're going to be taking some more on Wednesday. So watch for that, and I'll let you know on the air when, when it's going to air. But, uh, there was a, a point on the school bus. Remember when the kid was, the, was punching the other kid and said, Why are you hitting me? And he had no answer. Why do you think he was hitting me? Probably because he could. Yeah. Because he could. I think you're right. And I think also because there was no sanction if he did. So there was, and I think the mother was absolutely right. Uh, the bus driver saw what was going on. But he was in line. Uh, but all she had to do was look through the rearview mirror. Or the rearview mirror. Yeah, the, the rearview mirror. And she would see that this kid getting pumped. So she should have pulled the, the bus over. and and told that they no certain uncertain terms to stop and then report them to the officials of the police. I guess the two issues we're talking about is why are kids bullying and then uh, uh, how, how do you get stopped? And we haven't introduced Dom yet, Dom. Hey, thanks Mike very much. My name is Don Giordano. I'm with uh, 1210 Radio. In a previous life, I was a teacher and still write for the Philadelphia Daily News and wrote about this film uh, for tomorrow, at least certain aspects of it. Uh, the thing, Mike, and everyone that I picked up on, the two educators, it's both one the dean and the, the other person with her, this is uh, not as easy. I think the film did a good job in sort of the end in some of the subtleties. But what the two of you said, I experienced that as a teacher too, that if we intervene constantly around the clock and everything, there's a danger there, that that's all that we'll be doing. And I understand the dilemma that you face every day. I found the part of this to be very upbeat. The title character is just a kid that is lovable and overcame a lot of this, along with the help of his parents. And the, the things they did toward the end with him are very hopeful when he was talking about the girls and the snicker bars, etc. Uh, any number of kids I've seen are able to do that despite very, very difficult things. Others can't deal with it. And as an educator, finding that line between intervening, it takes uh, more than you might think, those that have not been in schools, to intervene in the situation. And I agree with the bus driver, uh, the mother who said, why doesn't the bus driver just say, sit down and shut up and sit in your seat? And the answer is that societally we've changed. And for the bus driver to do that would take a lot on her part. So I, I don't want to castigate the people. The only thing that bothered me the most, other than the horrific stuff, the subtle stuff, is the vice principal who tried to make the two kids shake hands. Oh, yeah. and I, I've, seen this, I've seen this sort of approach. There is, among some in my view, in the conflict resolution school, that we're going to uh, solve conflict by having both people agree and we'll shake hands on this, and the kid made a great point. It's not about that. There is one person that's right. There is one person that's wrong. And guess what? Sometimes in life, it's that way. These kids were wrong. They're bullying the other kid. There's no shaking hands and moving on. Adults have to intervene. I've seen it in such a variety of circumstances. Even sometimes the physically big kid who's bullied, it's not about that. It's about not equivocating and saying that both are wrong. Let's shake hands. We can put this behind us. And I don't think that woman is uncaring, that vice principal, but that was an excellent thing that I've seen sometimes. But she's in denial and the school's in denial because this is a very difficult thing to break through with the bullies when I was teaching and their parents. Right. I, it's a very, very difficult thing to do that. And if you tread too far, you're putting yourself on the line as an educator or something. Well, Tony, as I was watching the film,